We are Luca and Sara from Liu Live Everything and Wonder. After traveling the world with a truck camper, we returned to Italy when the pandemic hit. We converted our minivan Luigi into a beautiful tiny home on wheels in only five weeks. We decided to take you on a breathtaking journey through hidden gems, beautiful villages, historical sites, lovely beaches in our own country. This week we are showing you a day in the life on the Amalfi Coast, a garden tour, a luxury historical villa tour, in Positano and a lemon granita at sunset. Now, sit down, relax and enjoy the ride. Buon viaggio! Good morning, beautiful people! Welcome back to Liu, Live Everything and Wonder. I'm Luca, she's Sara and welcome back to the Amalfi Coast. If you missed our previous videos, we are together with Niki and Carlo of the YouTube channel Niki Positano. They live on the Amalfi Coast, they live in Positano. We are staying with them, they are showing us beautiful places, they are showing us how it is to truly live in the Amalfi Coast. Not as tourists, but as locals. So they have a beautiful house with a huge garden. They grow their own food, so they have vegetables, fruits, chicken. So they have to take care yes, <laughs> of but, this property. But together with them, we will show you also what it is uh, truly to live in a house where you have a lot of steps uh, to get to where in the summer it gets super busy and super touristic uh, and in the winter it's quite uh, calm calm and peaceful we are in one of our favorite places of the house that is the swinging bed today will be full of activities we'll start with a tour of the garden and we will speak more with Niki and Carlo they will talk about their lives here in uh, Positano and then we'll go with Niki to visit a beautiful villa and Luca this afternoon will go to see where Carlo works, works because it's pretty interesting and not so usual yes <laughs> okay Let's let's start this amazing day. He changed partner on this lighting. Ciao Carlo. Buongiorno Sara. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Ciao Ali. Good morning. Luca, you found your spot forever? Yes, forever. <laughs> Today yeah. is super, super hot. Uh, about 40 degrees Celsius, that is super hot. We should be a swinging bed inside a van. <laughs> <laughs> the, the van is already shaking and swinging. It doesn't need it. Ali. We'll ask now five questions to Niki and Carlo. They don't know anything about it, so it will be a surprise for them. And they will ask us uh, five questions, personal questions, uh, who knows, uh, but you will need to watch on their channel the answers. After living uh, together with you here and talking with you, sharing the daily life uh, with you, my question is uh, uh, when you will be older? and knowing that all these stairs uh, can become uh, something uh, hard to do. Mm -hmm. Do you have a plan? Uh, do you have uh, already a, an <laughs> idea what you would like to do? We don't have a plan yet. No? Non abbiamo un piano sì, ancora. In, in realtà abbiamo parlato tante volte di questo. We, uh, we're always talking about this. Mm -hmm. We're always wondering what we're going to do and where we're going to go because we're very aware that at some point in our lives we will not be able to climb nearly 500 steps to get to the road. But depends. What we're going to do is we're going to start every now and again traveling maybe to Tuscany or somewhere, maybe Sicily, and just have a look around and see if we find somewhere that we like. We, we don't know. We're going to just explore, uh, see if we find somewhere that we would possibly be happy to live in. We might go and stay somewhere for a month and see if we enjoy it. But we really don't know. I'd also like to spend a bit more time in England with my family in the future as well sure. so yeah we've we've got ideas but nothing nothing 
concrete, no concrete plants. Bisogna vedere se riusciamo a diventare vecchi. He's basically just said we have to wait to see if we get old. Of course, he, he does run the cemetery, so he does have these thoughts. <laughs> People die. Okay, let's not get into that now, though, no, please. No, okay. Next question. <laughs> Will you ever in your life leave everything and wonder? Like, leave everything you have and start another life in a different country? I would. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I love changing things up and doing something completely different and... I love exploring, I love seeing new places. Tu? Ok, a me piace esplorare, ma mm. uh, <laughs> non sono il tipo, no, è la verità, non sono il tipo, lascio tutto e me ne vado. No, okay. vado sì. e poi torno. Ok. <laughs> yeah. So Carlo's not, not as a free spirit as me in the sense that he likes to know what's happening and what he's doing and he likes to have his base. So he li he's happy to go away, but then he wants to come back home afterwards. Yeah. What do you like and what do you hate about living here? Ah. <laughs> I love living here because of the great weather for many, many, many more months than England has great weather. So I love that. And I also love the fact that I can step out of the front door and within a couple of minutes find somebody to talk to. It's really great if you're feeling lonely because it's really easy to find somebody in town and just start to chat with them. What I don't like is the congestion that comes with the tourism in high season on a normal year, let's say not the last year or so but on a normal year when it gets so crowded that you can't use your car because you can't drive anywhere because the traffic's at a standstill you can't walk through the little narrow t alleyways and lanes because there's so many people and um and it's just a bit too busy sometimes but let's say we've all had a break from that over the last year or two so um maybe it'll be a bit better from now on sono troppe scale da fare la burocrazia che non funziona he's afraid about when he gets older if we do stay here um it's very very limiting for elder people a lot of people can't handle the steps anymore at their age and are constricted to be stuck inside their house and they can't get out oh. and that is a big worry um and also the italian bureaucracy which is not just a thing in positano it's a general thing in italy the bureaucracy in this country is um absolutely crazy it's yeah. so hard to get anything done why did you start a youtube channel and when Oof. i started a youtube channel in 2011 i think a long time ago the beginning. it i used youtube <laughs> as a hard drive it was somewhere to store my videos that i made i didn't think about the fact that people would actually watch them i mainly started making videos because i knew a few people who wanted to do the Sentiera dei Dei, the path mm -hmm. of the gods, but they couldn't. They weren't um, fit enough or they were too old to be able to walk it. So I promised that I would go up there and film it and put it onto YouTube so they could watch from anywhere in the world. What's your favorite food? That's a difficult one. I know. I love food. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. That's an easy question. Chocolate. Okay. Anything chocolate. <laughs> if anybody wants to make me happy, just bring me chocolate and I'm happy. Okay. And Carlo? <laughs> Pasta. Everything. <laughs> everything. That's For Carlo is eat everything and wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no, eat everything and stay. Eat, eat everything, everything and lie on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> we will now have a tour of the garden together with Nikki. She will explain us how they grow their own food and what they grow. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a wander around. I quickly show you what we've got here and explain why we do it. We will see the Positano Lucky Land version of a garden. Potatoes, mandarins, oranges, onions, grapes, peppers, green beans, zucchini, plums, <laughs> and then we'll move a bit further along. <laughs> These are bread lemons. They are mainly decorative. Now we will open one so you can see how they look inside. I'm excited. They are super huge. And they're not, non è cedro, è limone. Limone del pane. So it's not cider, but it's uh, bread lemon. It's, a, it's an ugly one, but we won't yeah, miss it. So just start with it. Ghiaccio. 
Ooh. Look at the size. Ooh, I can feel the smell, the perfume. Uh, wow. Mm -hmm. Che profumo, anche solo già da Ready? distante. So, Mindy, how Ooh. do you call this white? The white pulp? is called the pith. Um, they're very dry inside, as you can yeah. see. There's not much juice at all. Not so these aren't really used for juicing because um, they're the not juicy. Pith <laughs> is what is important. And in the olden days, when the people here didn't have much food, they would cube these and they would put them in a salad okay. as something extra to make to the eat. salad bigger. Yes. Or they'd sprinkle them with sugar and just eat them like that. Like that. Lemons are a huge symbol of the Amalfi yes. coast. Amalfi, yeah. Yeah. especially. So when you see lemons like this, you know that you are in this part of the world. I'm curious to taste it. I never tried. So, so we are eating the white part. Uh. Oh, the name again? Bread lemon. No, uh, no uh, pith. Pith. Mm. Pith. I'm eating the pith. Uh, it's actually super sweet. Say I, it, Luca. Pith. Pith. <laughs> Sarah is eating the pith of the lemon. <laughs> This is absolutely delicious. Da <laughs> bene. <laughs> 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 See. Here in this part of the garden, we've got red onions. We've got cucumber vines growing up here. Then there's four rows of eggplants, some arugula or rocket growing here. And at the end, we've got three fig trees. We have three types of tomatoes in here at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we have the big salad tomatoes, which are the ones that grow to about this big, and they're lovely in salads. They're very, very mild. They are quarter di bue, or it's another? It's, yeah, I probably are... some, I'm not yeah. sure exactly what brand they are, because yeah. Luca often changes and he mm -hmm. tries different ones. We do all our own canning, so we make plenty and plenty of uh, passata and tomato sauce, which will get us the whole family through to the next year. Oh. I freeze a lot of zucchini, mm -hmm. I freeze a lot of um, red peppers, we grill them and then freeze them already yeah. grilled. We freeze green beans, we make our own jams, we uh, bottle melanzana, Luca does that, and, and zucchini as well. He'll preserve it in jars. Uh -huh. And uh, we potatoes will just keep, they, they, they keep for a long time here. So we can have a whole store in full of potatoes and we don't need to buy any for a year, which is really wow. good. We're very seasonal here in, um, in Italy. Uh, Italians don't like to buy vegetables or fruit that is out of season. So in the winter, we will have broccoli and cauliflower and cabbages, but you won't find anything like peaches or, or fresh cherry tomatoes yes, or anything. Sure. And again, in the summer, you won't find broccoli in the summer at all in Italy. It's very hard to find. So we're very seasonal and we're very aware of where our food is coming from. We like to eat as locally as possible. Italians are very proud of <laughs> what they make and what they grow. So they like to keep it local. And I think every region thinks that their products are the best. So they're, they're all very proud, which is a lovely thing. Thank you so much, Nikki, for the tour of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life happening here now. We still have to do the washing, even if we do YouTube videos. <laughs> exactly. Now we'll go together with Nikki to explore a beautiful villa in Positano. It's really lovely. It's, just, it's from the 17th century and it has been renovated, but renovated to look old. It's really beautiful. Let's go and have a look. going to visit one of the beautiful Positano's villas here. Its name is Villa San Giacomo. Let's go inside. This is our first villa in Positano.
it's incredible to see and to visit Positano and the Amalfi Coast with locals. Okay, this is the way we'll start the tour of this amazing villa with the fresh orange juice and an amazing view of Positano. The villa was built in 1741 and the name of the first owners was Bonacore, that in English means uh, good heart. And this is also the stemma that you can find outside the door. It's a heart with a crown. We will find the stemma also upstairs. You can find a lot of ancient uh, and old villas in Positano in this area. What is really unique about this one is that it's old outside and they did a conservative restoration of the villa so when you walk inside you can feel the history you can see the patina on the walls on the floor it's all decorated imagine when it was new and you could see i can see some spot some hands here a face over there unfortunately many villas are here you will go inside and inside there will be everything new everything painted modern and uh, what they choose to do with this villa is to keep uh, the identity of the villa that was here already before and I really like and enjoy this. The doors uh, they painted uh, with this really thick uh, green paint uh, and when they start uh, restoring uh, the house what they found uh, is uh, paintings underneath that coat uh, of paint uh, so they started restoring and we can find in many, many doors that are the original doors uh, from 1741. So this is magic. Yeah. So they try to keep everything as possible as it was before. They didn't have the television for sure at that time. Che meraviglia. Stupendo. But now let's go upstairs. Here you can see an old picture of Positano on here. How it used to be. When we walk up or down the, the steps to reach Nikki's and Carlos' house, we always think, you know, how they can manage to do this every day, how they carry groceries, how they carry furniture. And then you think how they were able to build everything we are so used to this kind of landscape but it was so difficult to build everything here you can see how they carry for example wood, wood. Uh, they use donkeys. Use donkeys to carry everything on the they were on always the carrying on their heads something it was a hard hard job you can see here look how they built under this. the rocks inside the rock. The Bonacore family was uh, a merchant's family and uh, from here they could uh, check and spot uh, their boats uh, that used to bring uh, and sell clothing, uh, spices, uh, fabrics uh, and from here they could check uh, all the movements and what they were doing, check the business. That's always important, even at that time, especially at that time. The Bonacore family sold uh, this beautiful villa to an English general. He lived here, he had uh, two little daughters, uh, and uh, there was this um, lady from Positano that used to take care of the general, of his daughters, of all the house. And um, when uh, the general died, she stayed here, she lived in this house uh, till she passed away alone. So she couldn't uh, take care of all the villa because it was super big. Uh, so she used to live uh, inside this room. This was her room that now is named Positano. So this room is the one that is more well maintained uh, because of that. Let's get inside. Are you curious? Yes. <laughs> They told us that the ceiling of this room is original and it's really beautiful. The painting, the 
the chandeliers, the doors, this ceiling, and the bathroom. Let's go and check the bathroom. It is huge. enter inside a house in a room and you are a guest you always say in Italian permesso or con permesso means that you are asking for the permission to enter house or room that you do not that you it's the first time that you enter All the styles are amazing. I can see myself living in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Of course. In the morning you wake up, you open the door and you are on the terrace. And this is what you see. Positano. After the lady died, the new owner is now Giacomo. That's why the name is now Villa San Giacomo. He owns also a few shops here in Positano in Italy. They are called Antica Sartoria. And he did an amazing job of yes. restoration. This is beautiful. Amazing. Beautiful outfit. Look at that, guys. <laughs> After the shooting, after the tour of the villa, now we'll have lunch here and the chef prepare a pasta with zucchini. Actually the zucchini from Niki's and Carlos Garden. Profumo. And now we will go back to Nikki's and Carlos' home. Prego, Luca. <laughs> Here is where. I work. The cemetery of Positano. Thank you, Carlo. And this is the little church. This is the Maria Santissima Assunta of Positano. Siete qui means you are here, so we are here right now. Positano is here. A quick stop in Nocelle to see the panorama and then we will go back home for dinner. Okay, Capri. Is that one? And the Faraglioni.
buonasera. Welcome to Chile, Piazza Santa Croce. We have a complimentary drink for you. Wow! Lemon thank granita. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Before thank the you. lady. Thank you. And then the man. Grazie mille. Gentleman. Gentilissimo. Macchiata all'arancia. Wow. Do you make this yourself, yeah? Yes, it's a... Uh, and what's, what's of the ingredients? Lemon? Very simple. We have two lemons, one from Amalfi and one from Sorrento. The juice is from Sorrento lemon. The Amalfi one is just uh, uh, grattugiato. Grated. 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 Mm. And uh, anyway, just the match between mm. uh, these two lemons and going to be... Uh, the perfect granita. Thank Enjoy you. Your drink. Thank Delicious. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> wow, ma che buona. This, is, nice granita. Yeah. This is a granita, guys. We were here sitting and talking and Tonino just arrived here and said you cannot enjoy a sunset without a granita, a lemon granita and he offers us a granita. If you are coming to Nocelle and you are walking on the Sentiero degli Dei, come here you can enjoy a granita or some lemon orange freshly squeezed juice with fresh lemons of Amalfi. With that box of lemons you can get 20 liters of granita. About 5 gallons. You must come back. Yeah, we will. When it's not so hot. Yes. And we can do lots and lots more things. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything. Grazie mille. It's such a bella bella. It's been really nice to have you all. <laughs> Ciao Oli. Ciao bella. Ciao. Ciao. See you soon. Boss climb back to Luigi. Buongiorno. If you wonder how they did it, this is the way here to carry up and down heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. They collect the garbage once a week in this way. Going up hills. Yes. <laughs> and down here. We are back in Luigi and we will leave Positano right now, but we will show you everything in the next episode. We are ready to hit the road again. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, please uh, <laughs> smash the thumbs up button. Hit the notification bell and please consider to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done already. It's the easiest way to support us. Thank you again to Niki and Carlo for the amazing hospitality, for the amazing experience together with them follow them check them out they will show you amazing places and experiences here on the amalfi coast the italian words for today's video are giardino garden intervista interview a presto see you soon giardino garden intervista interview a presto see you soon we love you we appreciate you thank you for coming along with us we'll see you next sunday and remember la vita è bella life is beautiful ciao ciao because now, together with Nikki, we will see. They grow, they. I can't remember the question there. <laughs> the Bonacore family were merchants first. Yes. Okay, guys, this history. The Bonacore family. Family. After the, ladies di after the lady dies, died. I think that we can. Uh. His is where uh, I work. Here? Okay. Right now, what? Okay, scusami. The Italian words for today's video are... Mera. All the village with the... Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, the video will be blocked. <laughs>